Let me read to you a passage from the 21st chapter of St. John's Gospel, verses 15 to 19. It's the Gospel for Friday of the seventh week of Eastertide. St. John writes, When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. I tell you the truth. When you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. That's from John chapter 21 verses 15 to 19. It shows how Jesus wants our love. You know, one of the most astonishing features of the Christian religion is that man finds himself seated with his Lord and God, as it were, who is asking for his love. But commonly, we take all this for granted. God treats man with an extraordinary dignity. And our Gospel today that I've read portrays this. The group of apostles, John gives us the names of some of them, have been out fishing all night. They caught nothing. But then as dawn was breaking, Jesus called to them from the shore, directing them to a huge catch. At this, they made their way to the shore, Simon Peter leading the way as he walked ahead in the water. On the shore, Jesus had prepared breakfast for them. Jesus, think of him. We ought never get used to the thought of Jesus. Our Lord once said during his public ministry that a prophet is never without honour except in his own country. In other words, that familiarity all too easily leads to contempt. We can get very used to the thought of Jesus and Jesus can become a mere thought rather than the living divine reality that he is. So there he was on the shore with breakfast prepared for his friends. He was man, man just as much as they, but in the first instance he was divine. He was a divine person and in him dwelt the fullness of the Godhead bodily. The entire divine being was present in this man Jesus of Nazareth, which is to say that he was the great God himself. There was nothing of the being of God which was not present and to be found in the person of Jesus which is not to say that he was the only person who was God. He was not the Father, nor was he the Holy Spirit, he was the Son. But his was the fullness of the divine being, and in gazing on this man, a person gazed on the living God. He was the jewel of the universe, in his divinity boundlessly transcending the universe in wealth of being. There he was on the shore, early in the morning with a charcoal fire preparing fish and breakfast. One of the astonishing features of the Christian religion is that man finds himself seated with his God who asks for his love. In Jesus Christ, God asks Simon if he loves him. He asks it three times and makes it clear to Peter that this is how he is to view his future life. We can appreciate this a little more when we think of the great concourse of men and women in history 
who have not known Jesus Christ, or knowing of him have not understood that he is the living God. If one is intelligent and well educated, one may visualize the ultimate in terms of pure actuality without any need or possibility of change. The ultimate is boundless being. Such a view, exalted and philosophically correct, would scarcely capture the heart of man. Nor does it involve a radically different relationship with the ultimate, in that God is still remote. In the main, outside of the Judeo-Christian revelation and those religions profoundly influenced by it, such as Islam, God is perceived as distant. And this is to be expected because of his utter transcendence. And various devices are employed to overcome this distance, and the multitude of religious rites and myths bear witness to man's yearning for communion with whatever is the beyond whatever is the explanation, whatever is the source, whatever is the final end. But God has answered the quest of man by being discovered in his midst as one of themselves. And there he is on the shore, among a few of his friends, risen from the dead, having gone through the great redemptive trial, the like of which has never been experienced by any other. There he is on the shore, he, the one God before whom all other so-called gods are nothing, converses with his creatures with respect and love. He has become man, has suffered for all his brothers and sisters of human history, and he asks us one by one for our love. Receiving the promise of love, he gives a share in his work. As we heard, when they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me, truly love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, Do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, Feed my sheep. John chapter 21, verse 15 to 19. Every day in the life of each one of us, Jesus Christ, true God and true man, our brother and our redeemer, asks us if we truly love him. This is the one thing which he desires of us, that we love him who is our God. It is to be a love that accepts totally what he has revealed. It is a love that accepts totally the church he established on the rock which was Peter, to whom he gave the charge of feeding his lambs, feeding his sheep. In a word, it is a love that shows itself in obedience to his will. If you love me, you will keep my commands, he once said. So let us place ourselves on the shore of the lake in the midst of the group gathered around our Lord and listen to him as he asks each of us if we love him. Yes, you do? You do? Well then, he says to us, share in my mission, feed my sheep, 